Welcome to the St. Paul Community Baptist Church virtual experience. We are commemorating the Ma'afa. This is our 26th year of sharing our sacred memory with the entire world. My name is David K. Brawley. I'm the seventh pastor of this great and robust congregation. I am so delighted to ask you to join us on this journey as we share our story. We call it Ma'afa. Ma'afa is a Kiswahili word. It means great calamity, suffering. And we use this word, which was given to us by Dr. Marimba Ani, to describe our black Holocaust and all the residuals of slavery. I'm here now in the sanctuary of the St. Paul Community Baptist Church. And for 25 years, we would present our sacred story to the entire world. People would come from all over in order to witness our telling and retelling of our story. The pews would be filled. And upon this stage, members of our congregation would share sacred memory. What a blessing it has been and what a journey. But today, because of COVID-19 restrictions, we had to do something different. I wanna celebrate the resilience and the creativity of our congregation. And so today, for the first time, we present Ma'afa, the movie. What you're getting ready to experience is based on history. Though some of the characters will be fictional, it is our hope and our desire that you will see the methodologies used and all of the strategies that have brought us to this point in history. Truly, the way out is back through. And now, Ma'afa, the movie, A Healing Journey. Hello? Hello? Hold on a second. Let me move over here so I can hear you. No, we'll be leaving here in a few minutes. We just finished eating breakfast. No, he still isn't eating that much. He says he's not hungry, and then he asks us, when are you coming back home? Yes, I know. One day he will understand, but right now, he surely misses you. Burden? <laughs> what burden? Honey, that's Grandma's baby. He's home. You had work taking care of all those sick people. Now don't you worry yourself none about this here child. He is home. No, we will go to the park like we always did before this COVID stuff hit. I will be all right. God's got me. You just Make sure you stay strong and come on back home to us, okay? We'll talk to you later. Okay. Love you too. Isaiah, come on son, grab your bag and let's go. Remember not to touch anything or anybody. We're still not out of the woods just yet. Okay, Grandma. The time is fast approaching when the first should be last and the last should be first and on the appearance of the signs that it will be made known to me when I should 
commence the great work. And on the appearance of the signs, that I should arise and prepare myself. The fact that he had his hands in his pockets should let you know. He didn't give a damn about the life he had in his hands, or better yet, under his knee. Eight minutes and 46 seconds slowly went by as he sat on that man's neck with no regard for his life. And now brother George Floyd is dead. Another black father without a son, another black mother without a son. That breaks my heart to see a child growing up without her father. And do you think they care about how many times we have to rest our heads down to sleep, having to deal with the fact that another life was taken? It, it just makes you wonder if they care about it at all. Look, as soon as I saw the video, I just knew there would be an immediate call to arrest these officers for murder, mm -hmm. right? Right. But as we can see, <laughs> that wasn't the case to put these officers away automatically. But this ain't new, and we keep going through this. How many calls do we have to make? Okay. How many more funerals do we need to attend before we see some real change? Well, okay, I for one am tired of talking, and I'm only interested in the conversations and actions that we put in place to turn this thing around. So let's start figuring out how to do just that. Right. All right. Grammy, who is George Floyd? Why do you ask? I heard some people talking about him, and I'm curious about what happened. Sadly, he was murdered. I hope the police catch whoever did this so that his family could be at peace. Baby, it was a police officer that killed him. Wait. I don't understand. I thought police were here to, to protect us. <laughs> Most of them do a good job at protecting us, but the system needs to be changed. What do you mean? Well, you're gonna grow up to be a beautiful, loving black man. And while some will love you, there are others that will see you as a threat. They will see the color of your skin and they think they know who and how you are. They will treat you poorly because that's what they were taught to do. They will call you out your name and try to anger you so that they find cause against you. They will put you in a cage or kill you because they fear your power. They will keep you from protecting me so that I may be your enemy also. These behaviors, my beloved son, are the remnants of pure evil in action. From this day forward, you must learn to see it, call it out, dismantle it. This thing that you're fighting against is called the Ma'afa. Ma'afa? What's the Ma'afa? Oh, 
and this is Jerry Red Redman. Blood, mucus, seizing, blood everywhere. And we settle by Florida.
Overseer. Yes. Overseer, yes. that nigga looked at me and I want you to do something immediately. This one right here. Mm -hmm. Nigga, did you look at that woman? Did you look at her? No. Answer me! No. Let's go, come on! No. Get over there, come on! Today is the day to pick that nigga. Step right up and get what you need. Men, women, boys, and girls, step right up. Let's make a deal on these niggas today. Pick, pick, pick a nigga. How much does one life cost? Nothing if the person is free. But if they not, then they a slave and can be purchased for a fee. Ships with bodies stacked like bricks headed for a country we would build. Blacks, both farmer and the crop, slaves to the land we tilled. Pick, pick, pick a nigga! Left to live in poverty despite the wealth we'd yield for white human traffickers who kept us in the field. Cows, chickens, beasts, birds, we can see eye to eye for we were both bred for consumption and our offspring born to die. Pick, pick! Pick a nigga! Our babies sold like chickens, eggs, men slaughtered like an ox. Black women raped and forced to breed. Families were seen as livestock. Hear the whips whistle through the air as they crescendo on our backs. Slaves rising at the crack of dawn, and every dawn it cracks. Right, Bryce, your nigga! How much does one black life cost? Let's do a quick price check, then add the tax and hidden fees of remorse and regret. When what goes around, comes around, and karma comes to collect. Only to find the slave owners dead and gone with the descendants holding the debt. Pick, pick, pick a nigga! Right up here. Line up. Sis here? Yes, sir? Come on over here and tend to this new shipment. You get them squared away, and make sure they get to following the rules yes. right away. Yes. Mm -hmm. If they fall out of line, mm -hmm. it's your hide, yeah. then theirs. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You clear? Yes, I'm sir. I won't let you down. All right. All right. Now y'all got to get to learning about things here right quick. So pay as close attention. See, Massa? He be rich white. And poor whites ain't allowed to sit at his table. He says they lower than dirt, and he won't have nothing to do with it. But for niggas, there be plenty classes. You got your butlers, your maids, your cooks, your carriage drivers, your carpenters, and your stablemen. Now the lowest class is the field niggas. And most of y'all will get to work there. And move on up like me. If you does a good job and you do's what Massa say. Hm. Just look at me. I has everything I want. Such your freedom. Freedom? What freedom? 
Ain't no freedom here for you. You best get that through your skull right now. Hmm. White folks being a fell flat on their face without us doing all the work. So it's your freedom is right here. And you, Master gonna need you to get to bring some young bucks right soon. So you go on over there and you see Miss Meemaw. She'll get you nice and ready. I had to breathe. It's nothing to it. You just lay there till it's over. Don't catch no feelings, because they ain't going to do you no good. I used to do all the work for the missus. Missus was mean. And she didn't take to feeding her own baby. So I had to feed the missus baby. Mrs. say she don't want her baby feeding after no black nigger baby's mouth. So they takes my baby away. And I cried so. They sell her. They say so I can't see her and lose my milk and be upset. That's what they say. I wanted to kill this baby. But I can't. Because she's so sweet. She's so small. The next baby I bore, the missus going to have one again, too. And she going to do the same thing to my baby girl, but I damn don't care if she kill me. Because I wasn't going to feed nobody's baby but my baby. But she didn't kill me. She told them to cut my milk titties off. And they got some of it off till Master stopped them. He said, cut my money away? But they took her and sold her anyway. Said to teach me a lesson. <laughs> so, I had two cheerings and two titties. So I lost two churns and one titty. Now I have one titty to feed with and nothing to feed. on anymore. As years passed, it became clear that the plight of our freedom would need to be on us because no one would willingly set us free. To them, we are non-human beasts of the land, brought and so to advance their lives. Our value was rooted in how much wealth we can generate, not for ourselves, but for those who stole our land, our language, and our culture. So the words of those who spoke rebellion began to resound louder and clearer. Gabriel Prosser, Denmark Vesey, and brother Nat Turner, who would tell us what he heard. I heard a loud noise in the heavens. Yes. And the spirit instantly appeared to me and said, the serpent is loosened. And Christ has laid down the yoke he has borne for the sins of men. And that I should take it on and fight the serpent. Yes, yes, yes. 
For the time is fast approaching mm -hmm. when the first should be last mm -hmm. and the last should be first. Mm -hmm. And on the appearance mm -hmm. of the signs mm -hmm. that it would be made known to me mm -hmm. when I should commence the great work. Great work. Great work. Great work. And on the appearance of the signs mm -hmm. that I should arise and prepare myself. My enemies with their own weapons. Never forget something like that. Just like Turner. That Mr. Brown was a good man. And he was gonna lead us to our freedom. There's always those niggas who are more loyal to their masters than their own kind. I was about nine years old when they come. It was warm. We were all settled in for the night. Slowly, we heard the voices in the distance. Each second that went by, they got louder and louder till it felt like they was right on top of us. Mama jumped out of bed and told us to get down and hide. I mean, we hid as best we could, but the voices were so loud. Kept getting closer. And they started to cry. I tried to keep them quiet, but it was really scary. And they came through the night like wolves looking for prey. And they wouldn't stop until they ate their fear. Just then, someone crashed through the door and was yelling at Mama, asking her where was Brown. She told him she didn't know. And they slammed her up against the wall and said she was lying. We cried, and they told us that if we weren't quiet, that they would kill her. We tried to hold back the tears, but we were so scared. Mama told us it would be all right and look away and cover our ears, but we could hear her screaming and we didn't know what to do. I mean, we cried for our daddy's help, but they took him away a long time ago. And you heard someone in the distance screaming, we found him. We got the nigger. They ran off shooting and screaming. There's gonna be a lynching tonight. Mama came out. They held on to us so tight that we could barely breathe, but we were so happy to hold her that it didn't matter. We barely slept that night. We woke up the next morning to a strange hush over the entire plantation. You could still smell the scent of charred flesh in the air as the wind gently blew across the meadow. We got on the road, followed the cries until we came across the field where they had hung Brown's body. I hid behind Mama as we walked over to his body and she said, This is what they do to your daddy. Don't you ever forget him or Mr. Brown.
Aurelia. Are you done preparing your presentation? Surely, this is the most gracious opportunity that we must not take lightly. Your words must convince that your methods are by far the best to secure a prosperous future. Dear wife, I assure you that all is well. Please, sit and listen. <clears throat> Gentlemen, I greet you here on the bank of the James River in the year of our Lord, 1712. Now I'm here today to help you solve some of your problems with your slaves. I caught a whiff of a dead slave hanging from a tree. And I can assure you that you are losing valuable stock with those hangings. Now in my bag here, I have a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. You will use fear, distrust, and envy for control purposes. Now, if we are to sustain our very basic economy, we must break and tie both the nigger and the horse. That is break them from one form of mental life to another. Keep the body, take the mind. In other words, break their will to resist. Dear. You must really emphasize the word break. It will give your presentation most valuable lift. In other words, break their will to resist. Yes, yes, that is so much better. <laughs> now, there is an art to long range economic planning. You must always keep your eyes and your thoughts on the nigger female and her offspring out of fear for her young male's life. She would psychologically train him to be mentally weak, independent, but physically strong. Because she herself is psychologically independent. She will train her female offspring to be psychologically independent. What do we have? You've got the nigger woman out front. And the male nigger in the back behind, tired and scared. Now this, this is the perfect solution for sound sleep and good economics. And the black slave, after receiving this indoctrination, shall carry it on and the process will become self-refueling and self-generating for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Mr. William Lynch, you have outdone yourself. Sheer brilliance at its best. Investors will line up to have your methods taught at establishments everywhere. With this method, we will not only secure the future of our children, but for all of generations.
I've watched you on your pedestal this fragile to fall Try to bury me in the dirt but I'm the root of it all the more you try to push me down, the stronger I grow. And sooner or later, you're going to have to reap what you sow. Your mentality, barbaric, heinous, and unevolved. It's time to tell your crimes over centuries unsolved. Your role in this atrocity shadowed and understated. To watch his lineages are brought and hmm, desecrated. Your man is at my cabin for some uninvited loving, giving you reason to walk around holding up these grudges. He's falling in love with the darkest of juice while your water's running dry that's why you holding the noose but I'ma survive cause I'm the cradle of life and I'ma hold it down for my people despite describing the life while you stood there shady nursed your babies lived through Hades you even got my man to start to hate me so look at yourself for nothing will be accomplished in the lynchings of my people you're seen as the accomplice stares into the mirror of my flesh and reflects melanin. Each day I awake in my black skin, I stand at the gate of this heaven. As the world watches in envy, for they know they are unable to carry this weight, to carry a world on their backs, to build cities from dust and blood and bone and rhythms. We made meals of scraps and ways out of no way, singing freedom songs in the air of your holocaust, setting cities on fire with cries, like Babylon burning in three-part harmony. My African progeny of whip and chain, ship and slave, I say from a space of grave dismay that we are dazed and confused, astray and bruised. Here in America, there has been repeated attempts to knock us unconscious. We have been seeing stars for as long as we have been seeing stripes. We have been receiving scars for so long. Damn near every inch of our collective black body is covered in wounds. Severance of family, community, self-respect, and trust. Our many heads, our limbs crippled and separated to be Remembered to be membered again, reassembled as a breathing unit requires first to remember.
These grounds are saturated with the blood of ancestors long forgotten. It is through the agony of their despair that we exist. They knew not who we would be, would continue to fight on our behalf, giving birth to new warriors with every battle, living through hell so that we could prevail. To not acknowledge them would undermine the magnitude of their sacrifices. We must love them enough to heal ourselves and to finally lay waste to the vestiges of our Ma'afa. We must reconnect to a truth that precedes our captivity and move ourselves forward into a new reality. For the millions are screaming out hoping that we would hear them. Therefore, dear, dear family, stand, stand with us as we raise our voices to call their names. Rihanna Taylor. Ahmaud Aubrey. Tamir Rice. Botham John. Sandra Bland. Youssef Hawkins. Elijah McLean. Eric Gardner. Mike Brown. Akai Gurley. And George Floyd and to pay homage to generations that span a millennium. Let us honor the lives, the spirits, and the legacies of our beloved ancestors and remind one another that they did not die in vain. Their spirits cannot be at peace until we do so. And as we commit to this ritual, to put off falsehoods and to speak truthfully to one another, we remember that we are all members of one body and that this body is on the verge to our reawakening.
signs of the times They're appearing everywhere hey, I can almost see the Father And he said, son, go get my children Get my children the midnight night ride The pride of Christ So right And Jesus Slips out On a cloud Call his children his
I understand now. I am clear. I know that we are the sun and the moon in the depth of the sea. Our hairstyles, locks and braids, are maps of mountain tops, and when I speak, I carve out new realities in distant places. We are all the children of God. Therefore, I am my ancestors, for I too am a spirit having a human experience. I can greet you with namaste, walaikum salam, akwaba, what up, and peace beloved, and all comes from the fullness of the love within my heart. My hand clap, my foot stomp, my big lips can create rhythms under their own interpretations that intersect and run as far as my own imagination. And since I'm a mirror of the universe, I am endless, I am black, I am proud, I am warrior, I am because I am, and people fear my ability to recall the memories that unlock my true consciousness. But it is inevitable, for when I do, for when we all do, this time, this period, this era, will be a memory for us all. And in that moment, life will begin anew, and we will all finally be able to breathe.